Yo, what's going on guys? Glad to see you back here for another one. Uh, so today we're gonna be porting the exhaust on the head for the M104. Super excited about this. It turned out fantastic. I'm really proud of this one and you guys are gonna get to see how I did it. Let's take a look. Go back, 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 back. So first thing, we need to take a look and see what we're working with and what we need to remove. Um, so from the last video, we saw right in here underneath the seat, there is a lip. Um, and so what we're going to need to do is flatten this out so that there's no lip right here. Um, so we're going to have to remove a little bit of material from the back side here, being careful of where the valve seat's up here. Um, you know, just trying not to remove material from that area. We want to remove material from this flat face in here so that it ends up flat against the bottom. And the same with the back side up in here. Um, this is the exhaust side, by the way. The intake side looks really nice. Um, there's already machine work done right here, so there's not really a lip. I can feel a slight bump, but there's not a lip. Um, and uh, if we look from in here, it's pretty nice, it swoops pretty nice, um, the casting lines aren't bad, um, the divider is pretty thin, I mean I'm sure that there's work that we could do in here, but I'm not going to mess with it, I'm trying to do as little as possible to this head, because this takes a long time um, doing everything here. So um, the goals are we're going to probably polish this up, the combustion chamber a little bit, Adjust this lip all the way around. Goes all the way around in here too. Uh, thin this out so it's gonna stay thick back here. And then as it comes forward, we're gonna thin it out into uh, uh, kind of like a knife edge. Um, and that will help with when the two ports, when the exhaust comes out and they combine into this one whole port here, that will reduce the turbulence and increase exhaust velocity. And lastly, uh, we're gonna open this up just a hair, just a little bit, because uh, if you look, there's a little bit of machine work done right here where it's flat, but then it transitions right here. And especially on the edges, it's a very sharp transition. It's a pretty good degree change. So um, those are the two main, or the three main things that we're gonna do is we're gonna open it up in there. We're gonna knife edge this. And we're gonna open this up a little bit. And then also we're gonna try to polish this up in here a little bit for the combustion chamber. Try to reflect some heat back into the combustion chamber, which will help improve efficiency a little bit and hopefully reduce adherence of carbon inside the combustion chamber. Those are the goals. Let's get started. Okay, comrades. So for this, we're going to need just a couple of things to start off. We need some of that. Then you're going to need these two bits. So this one comes out of just a rotary tool, uh, accessory kit. I got this at Harbor Freight. I don't know if this was $10, $20, what, but it wasn't like crazy expensive, you know. And uh, it's up here, okay? So you'll need one of these. And then also one of these. I got this at uh, Home Depot. I'm sure you could find it at Lowe's or whatever in the rotary tool section. Uh, this is called a, it's a multi-purpose cutting bit. This is what it looks like. It's pretty good at removing aluminum. And then we're gonna be using uh, these abrasive, uh, it says cartridge and spiral roll set. They're just like these sandpaper, like cylindrical cartridges, okay? And uh, it comes with this here, except this is, um, I had to modify it a little bit. Let me show you what it looks like before. Okay, so this is what it looks like before. And I cut it halfway, and then I put it in a drill holding it here carefully. Uh, I've actually had one of these break and it broke like right here where it, see that? Uh, but you put it in a drill, actually this way, and then you just right here until, until uh, it goes like that, yep. And you use a drill to make sure that it's even. I messed up the first time doing it and it wasn't even and it was all flopping around in my Dremel. So that's how you get these sanding rolls to fit in a Dremel. Here's my Dremel here, it hangs from the ceiling and I have an attachment where it's able to come down um, and then you can work on the head. Um, so yeah, that's how we're going to be removing material and then smoothing it out. We're going to go from 80 grit to 100 grit uh, to 120 grit. Let's jump into this. You're going to see me using bits and I might 
be doing the same thing but with a different bit. Um, I was doing some experimenting here to see what which bits were going to be better in which circumstances. So the bit that I say on screen, there will be a little badge on the screen that says what bit that I'm using or what grit of sandpaper, what have you. Um, follow that. Do not necessarily follow the bit that I'm using in my hands at the time follow the badge that I have at the bottom of the screen and use the video to watch for the technique that I use um, in different areas. So as you're porting, you're going to want to keep in mind the idea of fluid dynamics. Um, the science is called fluid dynamics and that is the science of the flow of things. So you want to think about how, uh, in, in this case, how the exhaust is going to leave the cylinder how it's going to recombine um, from the two ports into the one major port where then it comes out of the head. Uh, you just want to keep that in mind so that think about if you're like an exhaust particle and you're coming out, how are you going to ride the wall? How are you going to ride you know, the floor or the divider and how are you going to hit the other exhaust when you come out um, uh, from where the divider is and the two ports combine? You, know, you just want to keep in mind uh, that science and that kind of helps you visualize um, the work that needs to be done. Also, every time that I was finishing up with a specific grit of uh, roll, I would use a used roll of that grit to smooth out the combustion chamber and then go up to the next grit. Now sit back and relax and watch the technique that I use and I will come back in a couple minutes to talk about the next step. I know that I said we weren't going to polish anything, but I decided that I'm going to anyways because I'm already deep and I might as well and I want this thing to look beautiful. So what we're going to do, let me show you over here. 
We're gonna leave this at the sandpaper grit, the short radius. The long radius, we're going to uh, polish, okay? Not polish, but we're gonna uh, buff it out, make it look nice. And here we're gonna uh, uh, polish though. I am gonna polish this a little bit. You can see it's kind of shiny. But anyways, we're just gonna be polishing the long radius. We're gonna be using these, uh, man, I think this is like five, eight dollars or something like that. And I actually use this for the whole job and this is what they look like at the end. They're, they're, they're not bad. These get more abused. Um, this is a new pack, I haven't opened this yet. I, I use probably one and a half of these for, for this head, you know. But I didn't even finish these out. So it's 180 uh, and then 280. And then this is 320, okay. And then for the uh, combustion chamber, I just used some of these uh, cloth rotary wheels and then just some Dremel polishing stuff. I don't even know if I did it that great, but you know, it's better than nothing. So let's jump into that. So a really good tip when you're using these buffing wheels, um, you want to use more stroking than pushing. So spend more time with a lighter touch then less time with a heavier touch. That will make the end result much better and your wheels will last much longer. And remember, while I'm doing this, I'm not touching the floor or the short radius. Um, I'm trying my best to only be touching the ceiling or the long radius because you want to, the idea is the exhaust is going to come out and travel for longer on the top along the long radius and travel shorter, a shorter distance on the short radius. And if you have the floor a little bit more rough and the ceiling a little more smooth, it helps the exhaust on the top and the bottom not try to fight each other in speeds. They're more dragging on the floor and quickly running across the ceiling um, creating a less turbulent flow. At least that's the idea. Now sit back and watch this thing come to life. And there you have it. Here's the final product. It really turned out really nice. However, there's a couple of spots where um, I dug just a tiny bit too deep with the multi-purpose uh, cutting tool, but it really shouldn't be a problem. It's just, you know, there's just a couple of tiny little nicks on the uh, center divider there. 
in the exhaust, but really, I mean, this all turned out really good, and this is definitely going to flow exhaust way better than stock, and it's going to spool the turbo faster too, so. Um, along with, you know, reflecting heat out of the ports and keeping it in the exhaust, um, which helps increase uh, exhaust pressure, which in turn is uh, exhaust velocity, you know, a whole bunch of stuff that adds a tiny bit of efficiency here and there. At the end, you have a much more efficient engine. And that's kind of the hope with everything I'm doing with this build. Anyways, if you guys are getting value out of this, leave me a like. Uh, leave a comment if you wanted to see something different or have a question. And subscribe if you haven't yet. And I will see you next time.